how good are you at dealing with other people's problems? And who do you have on your mind at the moment who has a problem which is too big to deal with? I tend to find other people's problems fall into three categories for me. Firstly, there's, I know about this, I've had this experience, and here's a solution. That's hands down my favorite type of other person's problem. Everybody wins. It's also usually quite rare that I'm able to deliver an effective solution, but I have a go anyway. Uh, my second category of solution uh, problem solving is when I don't really know much about the problem, um, I don't have any experience or much empathy for it, but it doesn't sound that complicated. And so I'm like, great, we can have a go at this together. I'm sure we'll find a solution. And then the third category, which is by far the most common, is when I just don't know. I don't know how to help. The other day, a friend of mine came um, uh, around to chat, socially distanced, of course, um, and she just shared a problem with me. And I was heartbroken because it was a problem where I didn't know how to help. But it was also something that we've been talking about probably on and off for years. It was about relationships, it was something intractable, something deep, and I just felt really helpless. I said to her that I pray, maybe we prayed in the moment, I don't remember. Um, but the next morning when I was um, praying about it, I'd remember to pray, which I don't always. But the next morning I was praying about it and writing in my journal, and I was just like, Lord, what's the solution here? Like, where, where is the help going to come from in this, for this problem, for my friend? And the Lord said to me, lift your eyes to the hills. Where does her help come from? Her help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And in that moment, I felt um, so kind of relieved and at peace. And it wasn't that God showed me, you know, what the solution was. I was never going to figure it out. But what he did was say, this is where your friend needs to go. This is the source of the solution. This is where to look. And it was a huge comfort. And um, what I wanted to do today was to share a little bit of that with you. It comes from Psalm 121. And I want to explore just a little bit of that Psalm. And my hope is that by the time we get to the end of our short time together, we will have expanded our vision of who God is and how big he is and how capable he is. And it will um, just encourage us to reframe our problems and the problems of people around us um, in a way which is helpful for us right now. So when I was thinking about what to, uh, how to prepare for this talk before I had the chat with God about Psalm 121, I really wanted to do something that engaged with the stress and anxiety that everyone's feeling at the moment around uh, being locked down um, or unlocked and things being very uncertain. Um, and I was looking around for psalms that would kind of help us engage with that. And to be honest, there are loads. You know, the psalms can be quite a stressful place at times. And actually, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to add more stress into everybody's lives by tackling a psalm, which is um, you know, actually quite difficult and really, you know, engaging with some of those emotions in quite a um, kind of live way. So I was thrilled when um, I was praying and this Psalm 121 popped into mind because it has... It's full of power, it's full of truth, but it's also really gentle, um, which I think is what I need at the moment, and I hope it will be of benefit to you as well. I was doing some research about um, Psalm 121. I say research, I mean, I googled Psalm 121 and Wikipedia popped up some ideas, so <laughs> take those under advisement. But one of the things that it said was that Psalm 121, which is part of this group of the Psalms of Ascent, which I did know, um, I didn't know what it meant, but I think. Uh, there's not a huge amount of consensus on that. Essentially, there are psalms um, about kind of going up to Jerusalem or um, up to the temple. They're psalms of worship. But what I liked was that the person who wrote the Wikipedia entry said that the psalms of ascent are um, said 50% of them are cheerful, and they're all hopeful. And I was like, great, that's what I need right now in the middle of this weird lockdown time. I need truth which is cheerful and hopeful. Um, 
and that's uh, yeah I think that these is, this is a good group of psalms to read when you're feeling a bit down um, and I genuinely mean that there's a short collection of psalms 121 to 120 to 132 or something um, but they're lovely they're very restful and they're gentle but they have um, real truth in them as well so I highly encourage you to have a read um, into this group of psalms Let's start with that, shall we? Psalm 121, let me just read it out loud. I lift my eyes up to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade in your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. It's a beautiful psalm and it's uh, very well known. It's very uh, popular. People write songs about it. It's, it's one of those ones that we tend, tend to know. Um, and I was interested in some of the themes that emerge really from those first two verses, um, those first four lines, I lift my eyes to the hills, where's my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Um, that's where I want to spend most of our time today. And there are themes across this group of Psalms which kind of emerge in these, um, those, those two, two verses, those four lines, which to me are just really interesting. Um, and I wanted to share some reflections. So first, this idea of lifting up our eyes. We get it there in Psalm 121, um, but also 123, where it says, To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. And this feels to me like the perfect place to start when you're dealing with an intractable problem. You know, the temptation is to focus on the issue, to um, get weighed down by the problem, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, there are big problems in the world right now. And also you know, we all have challenges in our lives. And the temptation is very much to be laid down by the heaviness of that. But the psalmist encourages us to lift our eyes to the hills, which to me is an expression of praise. It's the beginning of an attitude of praise and an attitude of worship. I feel like lifting our eyes up to God is the, is the first step in finding him and finding him to be the solution to our problems. It feels like, in some ways, you know, we're making that choice to engage with God in the issue, but we're also resetting our expectations. We're not looking into the problem or to our neighbours or friends to find solutions. Um, we're, we're raising ourselves out of it and we're looking up to God. That's where the help is going to come from. And so then we go on to this line, where does my help come from? And, you know, I think this is more than just a rhetorical device, although, you know, the Psalms are full of those brilliant turns of phrase. Um, which helped the poetry kind of move to forwards. But it's, it's more than that. Um, you know, it's forcing us to reassess the situation. And sometimes we forget, partly because we live in a society which is successful and competent and there are safety nets. And often we know precisely where our help is going to come from. It's coming from a friend who's full of empathy and unlike me, doesn't just offer solutions, but really listens. Um, or it's from the fact that, you know, we've got a job. And so we know that even if it's getting tight towards the end of the month, there's a paycheck coming in a few days. You know, that's where our help tends to come from. And by forcing ourselves to stop and say, but hang on a minute, what's the source of the help? Where is it really coming from? I think that's a powerful thing to do. So yes, God uses friends and family. He'll use, you know, professional advisors and counsellors and therapists. They'll use the fact that we um, have skills and we can work to provide help and support. But ultimately, it comes from God. And I, I think it's really important that we recognise that. Because unless we do, we'll just be looking in the wrong places. And then the next line, um, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Um, and this is a theme which is echoed again in this group of Psalms there in 121, but also 124, um, where it says, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heaven and earth. And, you know, the Psalms, in fact, the whole Old Testament is full of these um, 
evocations of the power of God, using nature to describe his grandeur and his might. Um, and we see it in the New Testament as well. Um, yes, looking at nature, and um, we see kind of Jesus' mastery over nature, but also describing the power of God as he raised Jesus from the dead. You know, it's, it's a common theme in the New Testament. Paul talks about this. He says in uh, Ephesians, you know, I pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And it's important to be reminded of that power when we're faced with, with tragedy and with challenge. You know, who has the solutions to a global pandemic or to war or to the mental health crisis, which is ravaging our country? You know, these are not problems that we can solve. But by reminding ourselves of the greatness of God, it gives us hope in him as we look to him for the solutions rather than around ourselves. It gives us that hope and it, it adds faith to our actions. And I also think it's um, a really important thing to remember that we all have testimonies about God's goodness in our lives. And it's one of the reasons why it's so important to come together and to share those stories. Um, something which, you know, I don't feel I've done as well as I could have done during lockdown because, you know, perhaps when I needed it the most. But we have incredible stories ourselves and amongst us of God working in our lives. And sometimes they're even more helpful um, than reading about stories, that, things that God has done in other people's lives because they're real to us, they're close to us, um, they're our friends and our neighbours. And those things build our faith so that when we're faced with a challenge that feels impossible to deal with, we can remember that God has done it in the past and he will do it again because he's faithful to his nature. So in those first four verses, I feel like we've got the essential ingredients for um, dealing with difficult problems. You know, I lift my eyes to the hills. We're making that choice to engage with God in the issue and to engage with him um, in the spirit of worship. Where does my help come from? We're challenging that inner narrative of self-sufficiency and dependence on anything other than God. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Remembering his great and infinite power gives us hope that he will help us in our need. And I love it. And, you know, the rest of the psalm um, provides really lovely imagery about God, God's role uh, protecting us and supporting us. Um, there's the line uh, saying that he, he never slumbers or sleeps. The one who watches over us is constantly looking after us. Um, I, I really like that. I find it very encouraging and it, it echoes um, those uh, descriptions of Jesus and the Holy Spirit interceding on our behalf for the Father constantly, constantly praying for us and, and battling on our behalf, um, even when we can't fight for ourselves. Um, and it's lovely and it ends in this beautiful way just saying that the Lord will keep us, keep our going out and coming in from this time forth and forevermore. It's an eternal promise which we can really count on. I think finishing where I started, you know, with the problem. How do you deal with problems? Like when you're faced with other people's problems, how do you respond to those? Where do you look to for help? What do you do when there's a problem which feels too big to deal with? Well, I mean, my sense from this is that actually there aren't any problems which are, are too big to be dealt with. It might be too big for us to deal with on our own, but we have this amazing promise in Jesus that he is with us, that God is daily bearing our burdens and that we can lift our eyes to the hills and see real help. And that's an incredibly hopeful place to be in. You know, it doesn't mean that problems don't exist. They clearly do. Um, it doesn't mean that our friends don't need us to be there with them and to support them, but it means that we can look to God and we can rely on him. 